Hey friends, welcome back to the cabin and today I'm rendering lard. Well, I wanted to bring you along today to show you how I render my lard and I actually render my hog fat with no water and the key to doing this successfully is very, very low flame or low heat and a lot of patience. So when you get started or you get ready to render lard down, you want to be sure to set aside most of your day. Now you don't have to babysit it and watch over it all day, but you need to be close and check on it because you want to actually cook this down very, very slow. And that's going to be the key to not using water. Otherwise, if you, if you get impatient, turn your heat up, you can scorch it and run off the whole batch if you have all your fat in there. The reason that I don't use water is I lost, uh, some years ago, I lost a whole batch of rendered lard to mold. Uh, as hard as I tried to make sure that there was no water left behind, there must have been a minuscule amount and in the heat and humidity of the south, it didn't take much and it molded. So uh, I tried it without water and it's very successful for me and turns out a beautiful product. Okay, so what you need is you're gonna need a very heavy, heavy pot. Now you can see that this is a large Dutch oven and you can see that I've already started cutting my fat up. Now, when I cut my fat, I don't cut it up small, just maybe one inch chunks, one and a half, whatever. And also, I don't grind or have my butcher grind my fat. I don't like it like that. Now, the reason that a lot of people do that is because, and, and it's, it is a fact, they feel like that they're able to render more of the fat out. But we enjoy our cracklings, so if I just cut it in small chunks and we cook it down real slow, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. We get both products. We get our cracklings and we also get some really nice pretty white lard. So. So you're going to find two types of fat on your hog. The one type is just the predominant body fat that hogs have, but then you're also going to find something called leaf fat, and that is what covers their organs, particularly their kidneys. It's a finer, softer, higher quality fat that is excellent for rendering by itself to use in your pastries. But I actually failed to ask my butcher to separate those so everything got put in there together so we're just rendering it all down into just some beautiful white lard that we can use for anything and I can use this for my for my pie crust and everything like that but that leaf fat is just phenomenal for your pastries so I'm gonna get to cutting cutting up some more and try to get this cut up and get it in our pot and then I'm gonna show you the next steps so I want to talk to you just a little bit about cutting up your fat and some things to look for. You can see here that I'm just cutting up in just that size pieces. You know, you can, whatever you want to do, uh, you can uh, cut it up and I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest going any larger than that, but you can certainly cut that up smaller. Also, if you look here, you can see that this slab right here has quite a bit of meat and I'm going to slice that meat off because I do not want it in my, my, my pretty clean fat, you know, in my lard. But so. if it's a little bit frozen, of course, just like with chicken or anything else, it slices so much better. But a good sharp knife and we can take care of it. So I've got about all of the fat that I want to put in this size pot because I need to be able to stir it and keep distributing and moving the fat around so that it's going to cook down evenly over the next several hours. It could take up to six hours the way that I do it to, um, to get this cooked down and have a nice, clean, well-rendered product. So I'm about to turn my flame on. And I'm going to let it run at about a medium 
flame for just a minute or two just so we can go ahead and get the pot warmed up. And what we're wanting to do actually is to go ahead and start melting some of this fat on the bottom and that'll already build a layer to keep the rest of it from scorching. So we're only going to leave it on that medium flame for just a very short time. Another thing that I want to point out is you do not put a lid on this because we want to eliminate all moisture or as much as humanly possible. Okay, I can kind of hear it cooking, so I'm going to give it a stir because I don't want those on the bottom cooking too fast. Now I'm just going to stir this a little bit and then I'm going to turn my flame down and I will move the pot and show you what I'm talking about. You might can hear that little bit of frying sound. And by the way, that does indicate that there is moisture in the tissues. When you hear the crackling, when something starts cooking down like this, it's just uh, it's reinforcing the fact that there is moisture and we want to eliminate it. So I don't want to add moisture and I don't want to trap moisture with a lid. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this down and I'll show you what we've got here. You can tell that's a very tiny flame. So we're going to put this back and I'm just going to stir it and attend to it and try to get it uh, all kind of warmed up a little bit evenly. And then I'll just be close by to keep a watch on it and stir it pretty often. You do not want to leave this unattended. I'll be doing some other things right here in the house close to the kitchen. And my cabin's so small, anywhere I am in, the, in here is pretty close to the kitchen. So um, I'm going to just let this cook down. And I'll check back with you over the course of the, of the, of the next few hours and kind of show you the different stages where we're at. Okay, so I wanted to come back and give you a quick update. It's been about an hour, and over that hour I have stopped and stirred quite often, but just a quick stir. I didn't stand here and do a lot like I'm doing now. And I hope that you can see that there's a lot of shininess. I don't know that you can see, probably can't see any in the bottom yet. There's just a little bit of a layer in the bottom, but I hope you can see the shininess. And some of the pieces are a little bit darker where they may have been on the bottom. And so you'll see that we just, the reason we stir is we're taking what's on top and we're wanting to get it down to the bottom so everything is going to cook down slowly and evenly. So Okay, so you can see that I've got all the fat pulled out of this pot right here, so I've got my jar set up, so I'm going to bring you down where you can see me pouring it up, and then uh, when, it, when I get close to the bottom where some of the debris is, I'm just going to stop there, put the fat back in, and I'm going to raise the heat, and we're going to go ahead and fry those cracklings back out so we can have them for a snack later with a little bit of salt.
Okay, I wanted to show you how beautiful this lard turned out. It's so creamy white. But I wanted to point out something. You can see that this one is sealed and that one's not. And what happened was when, you know, we poured it in there very, very hot and I wiped off the edges. You always wipe off your rims, but I know that I didn't get the, the greasiness of the fat of the lard cleaned off of this one completely and that's why this one didn't seal now it's perfectly fine like this I'll leave it out and set it on my counter here and this will be the first one that I use this one right here will be fine it will sit on this on the shelf in the pantry for later down the road now we did not can this this is not canned but what we did when the heat actually sealed with the rubber gasket around here what we're doing is we're preventing air moving in and out of the jar which can cause it to go rancid so it's sealed but it's not canned so there you go another beautiful product from the homestead and this from our hogs they have provided so much that we can put in the pantry and I don't have to go to the store and buy it it's right here and I like to think that it's provided by God's hand because he created those hogs and he loves us and he provides resources that we can use to take care of ourselves I hope you learned some interesting things and I hope that you get the opportunity to render your own Lord and I hope your homestead dream becomes reality sooner than you think. I want to remind you of some beautiful words though. Don't ever forget that your Heavenly Father loves you. And I'll see you on the next video. God bless.